Natural selection selects. It doesn't create anything. It's a selection process. Creation is thought of it first. Natural selection is not a creative force. It can't create anything. It selects. That's all it does. It can't create a thing. Okay? If you worked in a factory that produced cars and your job was to select the good ones to go through and select the bad ones to go out, be fixed or, you know, scrapped, how long would it take that selection process of get, letting good cars through to change the car to an airplane? It'll never happen. See, the sele natural selection is never going to change the animal to something else. It's just going to make sure you get a good species of whatever it is, whether it's cows or corn, okay? You may get a big dog or a little dog, but you get a dog every single time. And I have five-year-olds. When I do this test, almost always they get it. I'll say, here we have a dog, a wolf, a coyote, and a banana. Which one is not like the others? <laughs> yeah, the banana. The Bible says they bring forth after their kind, not species, kind. Okay, and that's all we've ever observed. Variations happen, but they have limits. Farmers have been trying to get bigger pigs for a long time, but they'll never get a pig as big as Texas. Roaches become resistant to pesticides, but they will never become resistant to a sledgehammer. Okay? <laughs> they always still produce the same kind of plant or animal. No new information is created. It's always scrambling existing information. That's all we observe. Now, science is what we can see and study and test. If you want to believe it goes beyond that, that's fine. I don't care what you believe. But it's not science. No new information is added, okay? The gene pool of the new variety is always more limited. They can take a, a herd of dogs or a flock of dogs or whatever you want to call them and, and select the gene code to get a little tiny dog or a great big dog. They have the genetic variety in the original gene code. You can s select for a slice of the gene code and get a particular trait that you want, okay? Long tail feathers on a bird. Can't fly anymore, but you get really long tail feathers. Okay, good. But you didn't create anything. You selected part of the gene pool that was already existing. Somebody kept breeding dogs till they got a chihuahua. All that time and money to make a dog that is 100% useless. <laughs> How long would the chihuahuas last in the real world? Hmm? Hmm? Yeah, go ahead, make my day. All right. yeah. <laughs> genetic information is lost, it's not added. There's no new. Real evolution would require an increase in genetic complexity. You got to take the gene pool of a rock, which is nothing, and develop the gene pool of every living thing on Earth today. Talk about a genetic bottleneck. Take a look at the gene code of a rock sometime. Okay? There's a lot of kinds of corn in the world. Okay, they probably had a common ancestor. Corn. You never get a hamster or a tomato or a whale to grow on your corn stalk, though. Okay? Sure. There's a lot of varieties out there. They call it divergent evolution. Oh, it's not divergent evolution. It's still a dog. Okay? They show the kids five kinds of dogs and say, "Oh, see, that's divergent evolution." No, it's a variety of dog. It's proof what the Bible says. They bring forth after their kind. There's a lot of varieties of horses out there. Big horses and little horses. We had the world's smallest horse visit our museum. My granddaughter liked riding it, I guess, but. Uh, they crossbreed horses. They get Zorses, Zonkeys, Zionis, Zedonks, and Shebras. <laughs> they crossbreed all every which way because they're the same kind of animal. There's a herd of zebroids running around. So there's no question there's a lot of variation available. The question is, does it go any farther? Now, if Dr. Shermer wants to believe this variation we observe, which is science, can be extended, extrapolated, to mean infinite variation, he's welcome to believe that, but he just left science. And why he's not skeptical of his own belief, I don't understand. He's skeptical of a lot of things he ought to be skeptical of. Turn your, turn your focus on your own belief, Mike. I want to, I want to help you here. That's what I'm here for, okay? Thank you.